Hey guys, we are the Fur Addicts. I'm Kent, also known as Backcountry Assassin on Instagram. I'm Wyatt, um, Desert Fox Trapper on Instagram. And what we're trying to do right now is we decided, we've been talking about it for a while, and we want to film our trapping season this year. Uh, we're going to show you from everything from the first sale this year to getting our traps ready, getting our stretchers ready, getting our quads ready, going out and scouting. We'll be doing some shed hunting while we're scouting, checking cameras, doing everything we can. Uh, we love trapping. We're hobby trappers, but our trapping season, normally we get excited around October. This year we're spending the entire year, entire summer, getting ready for this trapping season, so hopefully we can get some good footage for this video. Um, hopefully throughout these videos we're able to uh, kind of portray what, what we want to. Um, it, it's gonna. It's not just going to show only the positives and it's it's not just going to be cat after cat on every video. We're going to show all the ups, all the downs throughout the season. Um, and there's a lot more downs throughout the season than ups. Um, that's just a, the fact of the matter. Um, but those highs are really what kind of keeps you going throughout the season and what makes it all worth it. And hopefully um, we're able to kind of portray what we, what we feel about all this because it, the reason we're out here is because we do have a, a deep love for the animals, a passion for being outdoors, for trapping, for, for just out there doing stuff. So hopefully we're able to kind of portray that point in these videos and you guys are able to follow along and, and hopefully some of it resonates with you. All right, picking up Wyatt right now. Wyatt. Um, he's been boraxing pelts all day while I was at work, so. We'll see how they all look. Got the four wheeler. Poor thing didn't even get to take it out once this year. I didn't have time. But uh, here's our first shed. Let's see. Gotta get my pelts out. That's my catch. Not much this year. Didn't have time. Next year's gonna be a little bit different. So get these things all loaded up. Yeah, that's this year's haul. That's all I got. There's Wyatt. He did pretty good on the fox this year. He did good on the coyotes for being pretty much city coyotes. These ones aren't making it to the cell. This is the last kitten he caught. He caught four cats within probably, what, two miles of them of each other? Yeah. And uh, next year we're going to trap that area good, so... But check this, check this cat out he caught. Look at the belly on that cat. What did it stretch? 41. 41, tip of nose to base of tail. That's to here. And uh, that's what Nevada's known for. That's what Southern Nevada's known for is, is these cats. So we may be city boys, but at least we got pretty cats, so. Now it's time to head off to Fallon and hopefully make some money. Got that on video. <laughs> <laughs> Right now we're just cleaning the pelts. Um, a little borax goes a long way. The cats are done, so we're pretty much just using leftover stuff to get the coyotes the best that we can. It can add something to it. It makes your furs look good. We've always had pride in the way our pelts look, so 
Uh, we'll get this coyote done and kind of compare it to another coyote side by side. You kind of see the difference of them. Then we'll touch up the cats and take everything to the cell tomorrow morning. So this one, just borax, took it out, shook it out. You can kind of see the life's back into that fur. It's not matted down. It really shows off what the animal would have looked like alive. This one came off the stretcher and got put in a car and drove here. Hasn't been boraxed yet. You can kind of see the difference in why we, why we borax them. Why is just finishing up his last coyote, but here's a look at all the fur put up. Ready to go. Got the cats. Like you said before, the one cat had to go, had to stay. Wasn't quite dry, but look at the bellies on this cat. That's a pretty cat. Uh, coyotes, these are city coyotes. These are all pet killers right here. Uh, it's really the only place we really target coyotes is just right around town. And there's the, the shot bobcat. Can't even tell it was shot. Turned out really good and uh, four more coyotes. It really does pay off to borax your pelts. Even these ugly city coyotes that are real dark. It really adds a lot to it. Um, or to comb them out. But something white, and I have always taken pride in their pelt. Put them up the best they can, even, even if they're all torn up gray fox. Um, do everything you can. Show your respect to the animal. It's just like eating all the meat on a deer. Putting your fur up as nice as you can. So We'll see how they do tomorrow and hope for the rest. Maybe one day I'll be able to buy a truck like this. <laughs> that was a joke. Brush them out even when they're pups. So all that's left, Wyatt, uh, Wyatt kept his, uh, his top lot fox. He figured he didn't want to outdo everybody at the cell, so he kept the kit fox, but empty fur hangers, and uh, you're looking at one of the highest, uh, highest sold cats. I would, I would have put it over and set a record if I would have sold it, but I didn't want to embarrass anyone. Mm. Two cats, over $1,000. This guy right here. I sold a cat four coyotes and got less money than he got for one cat so I'm not jealous I just hate Wyatt right now so anyways done with Fallon staying at my parents house uh, next thing we'll be in Vegas getting ready for the next trapping season and we'll be back here more, more for more money so I was asked a couple times on my Instagram page about um, how I put up a cat to make them look how they looked at the cell and stuff after I post some pictures. So I was just gonna give you a quick run through. So first thing is I always use wood stretchers. Um, it gives them more width. You're able to really nitpick where you want that fur by being able to put pins all over it. Um, so the first thing I always do is I go for length. Um, bobcats measured from um, tip of the nose the base of the tail so I'll go med get my as much length as possible pulled down and pin there and then I focus on the belly um, so I'll pull, the, I'll pull my legs down pin them wide to the end of the stretchers and then I focus on getting as much white as I can as far down as I can so that's by kind of pin pinning in the belly and the sides of the legs together down this belly board so it just goes all the way down um, I had a couple cats this year that had mud on them it's good to wash them when uh, before you put anything up on the stretcher I know a lot of people try to come after they put them on the stretcher and rub out the dirt the only problem with that is you don't have a good vision of the color line when you're putting it up and that's kind of what I base everything on I want the width as wide as the white so the white ends 
at the side of my at the side of my stretcher so that it just looks like this whole cat's belly was white whether it was or not um, after you kind of got it pinned up the front legs you want up as high as you can because underneath them may not have as much white but usually on the back of the legs there's a ton of white so you put um, something in there to hold the legs out this is uh, broken hangers um, the edge of uh, plastic hangers put them in pin them up so everything's up and just you just are trying to show the white and then I'll take a comb and you comb it up against the grain of the hair everything to the head and then if you can hang it upside down so that that hair dries coming down and then uh, and then of course when it's dry you want to check the legs those are some of the parts that will dry last and then the uh, cartilage in the ears when they're all hard you can pull it off and then kind of last steps to really get the life back into it before sale is to rub in borax shake or blow the borax off and then comb it after that again against the grain um, which I think is already you guys have probably already seen that part but those are kind of just the basics and a lot of it as you start going you start learning about and uh, after a while it becomes an art form where you're just trying to use what has worked before that has made it look the best and how you feel and when you take the pride in it it's it's time consuming but it's easy to do